Hey y'all, happy Monday! Uh, I am so happy that we survived this first day back after Thanksgiving break. I know um, that we had a busy day and I threw a lot at you, so way to go and handling it like a boss fifth grader. Uh, we're getting into lesson 21 and I think you guys are going to be very relieved to uh, learn that lesson 21 really is just kind of piggybacking off of lesson 20. We're going to continue dividing and we're even still going to continue getting away with renaming remainders as remainders. We're not even trying transferring them into decimals yet. Um, so we're just going to continue practicing. It's pretty complicated stuff. Uh, so it's worth like two lessons worth of practice. Uh, and we're going to do continue using that check step to make sure that everything is all good. Um, so let's get going here. Hi, so look at me. I am so fancy. I have uh, inserted our lesson number and our strategy. That is a new and improved, not that test. Um, I guess this is a, a text feature. Yeah, way to go. Text feature of our math videos. I am still going to write today's date until I figure out a fancy way to import some sort of calendar. Uh, so we're in lesson 21 on the 26th, first Monday back from Thanksgiving break. And let's look at our target for today. Divide two and three digit dividends by two digit divisors. Keep in mind our dividends are these monkeys and our divisors are these monkeys. Uh, with single digit quotients, quotients again are the, is the fancy word for the answer to a division expression and make connections to a written method. Um, I'm okay, I, I don't really know what that means. Don't tell anyone, but I am just assuming that we're being mindful of all of this work. Oh, maybe the connection to the written method is this, like a written writing out the expressions. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, anyway, so like I said in the intro, we're dividing, we're renaming our remainders as remainders, and we're just kind of enjoying life uh, during this time because it's going to get a little bit more complicated than this. I think it's funny that we're allowed to kind of backtrack and rename our remainders as remainders, but we're just going to go with it. Thank you, Eureka. Okay, so it still continues to be so imperative. Imperative is a fancy word for important. Imperative that we set this up the correct way. Think about how you, we would say this expression. 148 divided by one six, I'm so sorry. 148 divided by 67. Please make sure that 148 is being divided by 67. Please make sure that this is set up the right way. If you do not set this up the correct way, there's no chance that this quotient is going to come out as a correct answer. So 148 do, do, do it, divided by 67. Okay, so let's think now about hmm, how many 67s can I squeeze into 148? Here's what we can do uh, as a strategy to figure out like our first step. Um, let's think about mm, 67 times 2. And again, I'm using this this available room on the side. You guys know in your problem sets or on your homework, we don't have tons of room. So feel free to grab some paper. Um, so let's look at 67 times 2 to figure out a good starting point. 2 times 7 is 14. Bring that 1 over, that 10, 1, 10 over. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1 is 13. Um, wow, I think that's actually a great starting point point because 134 and 148 are super close. Also, what is so important, you guys, is that we keep everything aligned. This 2 is going to go right above the 8 because we are saying that there are two 67s that go in 148. If I were to put my 2 above this 4, that would be communicating that there are two 67s that live inside 14. And that is absolute, just that's complete blasphemy. That is not true. You guys know that that's not even possible. So please check yourself before you wreck yourself. So we've got two 67s that live inside 148. Okay, now we're going to go down two times 67. Oh, wait, I've got it right over here. Thanks. That work on the side is so helpful. Do not erase it. 
Okay, now we're looking for the difference between 148 and 134. Of course, the difference is just a fancy name for the answer to a subtraction expression. 8 minus 4, 4. Thank you. 4, four minus 3. Thank you, Vanya. 1. 1 minus 1, nothing. Now we're going to check. Hmm, is 14 smaller than 67? Yes. All we have to do, mathematicians, is just rewrite the remainder uh, up top. So our quotient is 2. We have a remainder of 14, but we're going to use this check step. And here's how we're going to use the check step. We're going to take our divisor, which is 67, and we're going to multiply it by our quotient, which is 2. Hmm, if only I knew what 67 times... All right, we have it over here. We have 67 times 2. I don't have to do it again. Good thing I didn't erase that. Okay, so now we take our product here and we're going to bring, drop it down a line. So we have 134 and we're going to add, so we did divisor times the quotient is 134. Now we're going to take that product and add our remainder, which is 14, 134 plus 14. You might be able to do this horizontally if you are like Spider-Man or Spider-Woman, or I like to stack things neatly and nicely. And let's look at 134 plus 14. We've got an 8, we've got a 4, and we've got a 1. So our sum is 148. So what I'm crossing my fingers and toes with is I'm hoping that that number is the same as our original dividend. And indeed, it is. Life is good. Woohoo! Happy star. How fun is that, you guys? Um, let's take a look at a word problem, shall we? Okay, kiddos, I'm going to leave uh, this fancy text feature in the video so we can continue kind of keeping track of what we're working on exactly. Um, and I think this is a good way to um, check in with our learning. And sometimes I think when we get through, like in more complicated lessons, this, is, this lesson in particular is pretty straightforward. Sometimes we lose sight of exactly what we're working on. So I'm going to keep this awesome uh, text feature in our videos moving forward so that we can um, just keep in touch with what we're working on today. Um, as a matter of fact, this new text feature is our secret word. So tomorrow when you come in, you're going to share what amazing new addition has Mrs. Calamaris added to our videos. There she is. Um, okay, so let's look at this one. This, this problem is really, really interesting. I thought it would be a good one for us to do together. Uh, so here we're asked to generate and solve at least one more division problem with the same quotient and remainder as the one below. Explain your thought process. Interesting. Um, let's just remind ourselves of our vocabulary. So in this lesson, we're dividing uh, two and three digit dividends. Dividend is our monkey that lives inside that house of division. And then our divisor, of course, is whatever we're dividing by. And then the quotient lives up here. Quotient, doot, there we go, is that friend. And then of course a remainder would be anything left over. Okay, so here we're going to find something that has the same quotient and the same remainder. It looks like Eureka uh, didn't quite finish expressing the final answer for this problem. So I'm going to help you out, Eureka. You're welcome. Uh, we had 11 left over, so we're going to re rename, can I zoom in a little here? Um, we're going to rename our, or we're just going to write out our, our remainder right up here. It's supposed to be on that top line, but, uh, oh yeah, it is on the top line. Great. So our quotient here is 8 remainder 11. The original problem was 475 divided by 58. We went through, or uh, Eureka went through and found out that 8 times 58 is 464. And then when we looked for the difference between, or when Eureka looked for the difference between these two numbers, we had 11 left over. Okay, so we've been told that we need to come up with another division problem that has the same quotient. The quotient here is 8, and the remainder here is 11. I'm pretty sure, if memory serves me correctly, that we have a uh, problem like this on our our end of module celebration of learning. So that's why this is a really, really important problem. So we're looking for something 
<coughs> that has um, a quotient of 8 and a remainder of 11. I'm going to start down here. Do you guys remember this check step that we always think about when we ask ourselves, is the remainder smaller than our divisor? And yes, 11 is smaller than our divisor. So this is so important. We can't have a remainder that is larger than our divisor because that would mean that we could squeeze another one of these into our dividend. Here's what I'm talking about. Um, if we had if we had a remainder of just say this was no, I'm not even going to say. It's not gonna work. Let's see. If we had a remainder here of 59, is 59 smaller than 58? No, of course, you guys, you know, I know the difference between 475 and 464 is not 59. I know that. But I'm just trying to show you how important the remainder is. If we have a remainder that's larger than our divisor, then we know that we can actually squeeze another one of these into our quotient. Okay? So let's just consider that. I'm going to erase that so the problem does not look mathematically incorrect. Uh, there we go. Let's consider that when we're making our own problem. So whatever this number is, it has to be more than our remainder. Our remainder is 11. So whatever we're dividing by, whatever our divisor is, has to be more than 11. Let's just say we're making this up. Let's just go ahead and say we want that number to be 15. Okay. So if our divisor is going to be 15 and our quotient is going to be 8, how do we figure out the number inside here. How do we figure out our dividend? Well, I know 8 times 15 is going to give us whatever number we're subtracting from our uh, dividend. And then I know that the difference is going to have to be 11 because we have to have the same quotient and remainder as the first problem here. So how we're going to do this, you guys, is we're going to look at 8 times 15, we can just do that work here on the side, 8 times 15, which is 8 times 5 is 40, bring that 4 over, 8 times 1 is 8 plus 4 is 12. So 120 is going to be this bottom number, the number that we're going to take away from our dividend. But how do we figure out the dividend? We know the dividend minus 120 is going to be 11. So we know the dividend in our problem is going to be some number minus 120, which is going to give us 11. So this number minus 120 is going to be 11. So this number must be 11 more than this number. Let's see if that works out. So 120 plus 11 is 1, 3, one. This number in the box, <coughs> minus 120 must be 11. Let's see if that works out. 131 minus 120. 1 minus 0 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. Oh, it's 11. Great. This number in the box is 11 more than this number because when I take 131, I'm sorry, I have 131, I take 120 from it, we're left with 11. So that means the divisor for our problem is going to be 131. I know it's like it's really working backwards and from inside the problem. And here, believe it or not, you guys, we're actually using some algebra. But let's go back and make sure that this is all correct. 8 times 15. Well, first, let's, let's make sure that our quotient and our remainder are the same as the original problem. Yes, they are. 8 remainder 11. Now let's go back and make sure that all this work is correct. 8 times 15, well, I did the work over here, is 120. Okay, so we have that there. 131 minus 120 is 11. So it looks like we are successful here. Um, this is such a crucial problem. We will continue to work on problems like these. <coughs> if you don't understand the logic that I use, and if this is seeming a little um, overwhelming, please rewatch the section one more time just so your brain can really kind of marinate on this process because, again, this is really, really important. Um, speaking of important, I...
am have to sh share a very important message with you guys. I'm so impressed with you. I love how you come to school every day, working so hard, growing and learning. Cannot wait to uh, do some more of that with you tomorrow. I'm so <laughs>